All right, guys, so we know we are currently in the middle of the multiverse saga. We just ended off the Infinity Saga with Infinity War Endgame. Now we are on to the multiverse saga, phase four, five, and six, all building up to Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars, the next two Avengers movies. Now, one of the biggest complaints about phase four has been like, oh, nothing's connected. And like, oh, it's all uh, individual stuff, you know, that kind of thing. But when you really look at it, there is a lot of connective tissue here. And it's it's probably just because it's it's less obvious than it was in the Infinity Saga because it was literally there. It's like, okay, here's an Infinity Stone. Here's another Infinity Stone. It's you don't have that type of thing. You don't have these MacGuffins in the multiverse saga like you did in the Infinity Saga. Or do you? Because I just noticed something that's actually pretty crazy. Because the other day, we of course got our first trailer for Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Great trailer. Of course, check out my trailer breakdown if you haven't already. But this trailer introduced us to Kang the Conqueror. Jonathan Majors, he is going to be the big bad of the multiverse saga, at least for the first Avengers movie with Kang Dynasty. We don't know about Secret Wars. That could be Doctor Doom. We'll see. But Kang the Conqueror is coming. He is being introduced in the Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania movie. We got kind of an introduction to him with He Who Remains in uh, the Loki Disney Plus series, but that was a variant. Now, the interesting thing about Kang the Conqueror in this trailer is when you look closely at his technology, it looks a little familiar. So just looking at the comparison here between the Ten Rings in Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, the Bengal in Ms. Marvel, and now Kang's technology in Quantumania, it looks very, very sim similar. Not, not only does it look like similar technology, but specifically rings. You know, obviously the Ten Rings. Uh, the Bengals are kind of like elongated rings, I guess you could say. And then Kang is also dealing with these huge, huge rings in the quantum realm. So let's take a little bit of a closer look here. So like I said, the Ten Rings in Shang-Chi and the Land of the Ten Rings. This was kind of the first glimpse at this. These are these small rings with these like crazy hieroglyphic type markings all over the sides of them. They glow with this blue energy. They have this immense magical powers. And then we have Ms. Marvel, where not only did we get the bangles, but also literally in the temple where the bangles were found, you had engraved on the floor symbols and markings that looked remarkably like the Ten Rings. So we already got kind of little hints at this of like, okay, there's some sort of connection here between the Ten Rings, the bangles, what is going on here? And then even in the Loki Disney Plus series, which I didn't even think about until now, going back to that when we got He Who Remains and he was explaining about how variants of himself, aka Kang the Conqueror, or multiple Kangs out there in the multiverse, they created all this crazy technology and was from the future, did all this crazy time travel stuff, dealt with the multiverse. It's a whole lot of complicated stuff, but basically when we got this little demonstration here it did also feature these little rings as well so that's another thing i wanted to bring into this because that's quite an interesting detail now we can all also connect this to eternals as well because eternals may not be everybody's favorite movie i personally actually really enjoyed eternals uh, i know the box office and the general audience did not but i had a lot of fun with eternals and one of the characters we were introduced to there is fastos so Brian Tyree Henry, Henry, of course, played uh, Fastos in that movie. Um, our first, I think, I think first openly gay superhero in the MCU. So that was pretty cool. But his thing, the thing that made him special, because of course the Eternals, they each had their own individual special powers. His thing is he was the tech guy. He was the guy who created all these inventions, created all these innovations for the human civilization. And just looking at the kind of magic slash science that he used and the that the Eternals used with their powers, it does also look very reminiscent of this technology we're seeing with the Ten Rings, with the Bengals, with Kang's technology as well. So it just gets you thinking, especially going back to that post credit scene of Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, where you have Wong 
introducing Shang-Chi and Aquafina's Katie to some of the Avengers, Bruce Banner, and of course Captain Marvel, and they're talking about how something big is coming. You can see this kind of magical hologram of rings, this whole continued power pattern of these rings, and I promise this isn't going to end up being like WandaVision where it was like, oh, hexagons, hexagons everywhere. That turned out to be nothing. Mo, no. We got an actual connection here with these rings. And also, just going back to the Shang-Chi post credit scene, it's kind of crazy to think that this is actually a thing because that movie came out over a year ago. Most people have forgotten about this post credit scene. I actually myself even forgot like, oh yeah, that Shang-Chi post credit scene was actually a thing. Okay. And so bringing that into perspective, we haven't really talked about that in a while because we saw it. We were like, oh, this has got to be setting up something big. Is this setting up the next Avengers movie? Nah, that's not coming anytime soon. But now that we know that Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars are just a few years away, this post guard scene was setting that up. And especially now connecting this to these other projects, these other phase four projects that we've seen here, it's just really interesting to see the interconnectedness. And now you really can't go with that stereotypical complaint of phase four of like, oh, nothing's connected and like oh it's all the same no we have connections here there is set up for the multiverse saga you just have to look deeper because these connections are very clear when you put them side by side separately you know months and years in between these projects you may not notice just because of memory and forgetting stuff but when you put these things by side by side you see the ten rings the bangles Kang's technology in the Quantum Mania trailer and what he remains was showcasing in the Loki finale, alongside Fastos and the Eternals, there are connections here. And I don't exactly know what all of it means. Does this mean that Kang the Conqueror, because of his multiversal power powers, has some sort of connection to Fastos? Is it that Fastos is the one that created Kang's technology, or is it the other way around? Because we know that the the so the uh, Eternals are kind of like um, artificial beings. Like, does Kang the Conqueror have something to do with their creation and the Celestials? I don't know. It's crazy. It's complicated to think about, and I'm not smart enough to come up with those type of theories, but I just wanted to bring this to your attention that this is a thing. The Infinity Saga, we had Thanos, we had the, the Infinity Stones, we had those obvious MacGuffins, the obvious connections that brought these projects together, but now in the Multiverse Saga, it's much more abstract, and you have to look in the little details. Remember, the devil's in the details. And we're not even talking about Mephisto this time. We're talking about Kang the Conqueror and his 31st century from the future technology that is connecting everything together. And it's, you know, you got to think about, okay, what other upcoming projects are we getting that will also have these connections as well? Because you look at our next movie is Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Vibranium is a very, very innovative tool and resource as well. Could that have some sort of connection? We know we're getting a new Black Panther suit. Who knows? Um, obviously, our many Disney Plus series that are coming next year, our many movies. Again, Quantumania, big introduction to Kang the Conqueror. That is coming in February, the kickoff to Phase 5. There's a lot of question marks here, but when you, like I said, when you start connecting the dots, it gets you thinking... Kang, the Di Kang Dynasty is right around the corner and so is Secret Wars and things are definitely being set up here. The breadcrumbs are being left. You just have to put the puzzle pieces together and you can see that there is indeed a plan for the multiverse saga. So anyways, guys, let me know your thoughts on this in the comments below. What do you think about these little clues and bits of pieces throughout Phase 4 that actually do indeed connect themselves to Kang the Conqueror, to the Multiverse Saga, and to this overall goal and five, six, seven year plan of the Multiverse Saga and Secret Wars and Kang Dynasty? What do you think about all this? Let me know all your thought theories and predictions in the comments below. But for now, guys, thanks so much for watching. Please drop a give and enjoy this video and hit the subscribe button so I can keep you to date on everything goes on in the Marvel life.